The eight long, pointed legs of a massive spider, fangs dripping with deadly venom, skitter across the ground. It is one of the apex predators here, until it's crushed by the scaly foot of SCP-682, the backroom's newest, angriest resident. When we last left our least favorite anomalous reptile, SCP-682 was eight levels deep into the terrifying extra-dimensional labyrinth known as the Backrooms. With SCP-343 knows how many levels left to traverse, the hard-to-destroy reptile was beginning to feel a bubbling sense of contempt for everything in this godforsaken reality. That is to say, SCP-682 felt this way it usually felt, but for once there was no feeble Foundation personnel to unleash its rage on. And while its long absence back in the world outside of the backrooms has been seen as a stressful inconvenience for most of the Foundation, the fact that the Keter-class creature had done no further harm since it evaded containment had led many researchers to believe that, however unlikely it was, SCP-682 no longer existed. It's out of our hair, said one Dr. Wazowski. Though the Foundation would continue to launch around-the-clock reconnaissance missions the world over, the mobile task force that seemingly did the deed of destroying the hard-to-destroy reptile was currently being treated to a company pizza party, paid for by the Foundation's Sorry a Lizard Ate Your Loved One fund, which received a small donation from the O5 Council every time that SCP-682 breached containment. But there was no chance of relief for SCP-682 itself, as wandering through the back rooms without a map or strong sense of purpose was certainly no pizza party. Level 8 the level that SCP-682 currently found itself on was a cave system crawling with all manner of hostile entities. Well, hostile for weak and pathetic human beings, at least. To say the same was true for SCP-682 would be a gross distortion of the definition of the word hostile, especially because SCP-682 had faced many of these miserable monstrosities before on the previous levels. The clumps, hounds, death rats, and smilers were back in droves, and these now all too familiar entities seemingly couldn't help themselves from aggressively pouncing on SCP-682 the second that the reptile entered their line of sight. Not that getting the drop on the anomaly would buy them any advantage, as SCP-682 effortlessly bodied them one after another. Playing the hits already, backrooms, SCP-682 thought to itself. At least give me something new to chew on. Through the jumble of stalactites and stalagmites, SCP-682 could see a child faceling standing on the other side of an unusual pit of tar. The last time that SCP-682 encountered a few of these unfittingly named faceless little girls during its time on Level 2, it had ignored the entities out of a sense that there would be more interesting monsters to destroy going forward. SCP-682 now realized, almost shamefully, that it had largely been proven wrong. Perhaps the child facelings were in fact more than meets the eye, or knew something that the other entities didn't. Regardless, there were never enough pathetic cretins in the back rooms for SCP-682 to vent its nigh-limitless frustration on. The small faceling would simply be the next to bite the dust. Or so SCP-682 thought. As the hard-to-destroy reptile charged towards the entity, its claws touched down on the puddle of tar, and almost immediately, a countless number of human hands emerged from the liquid beneath and pulled 682 under. The anomaly was able to easily adapt the level of strength necessary to escape from the grasp of the tar pit entities and resurface. When it emerged, however, the child faceling was nowhere to be found. SCP-682 had given the creepy little menace some credit, as it was apparently smarter than the other entities which had crossed the lizard's path. SCP-682 put as much distance between itself and that annoying tar pit as it could, and it was vigilant for any other similar hazards. Not especially amused by the concept of being swallowed up again, SCP-682 adapted a pair of large draconic wings which it used to carry itself aloft through the caves of level 8. From above, the anomaly could see a number of foot-long centipede-like entities, as well as entities that resembled eyeless chickens, and for once, neither of these horrendous mistakes of creation seemed interesting in assaulting SCP-682. It was surprising, but SCP-682 actually felt a little bit relieved. Not because it felt remotely threatened by anything that crawled, trotted, or slung through the back rooms, but because it didn't have to waste any of its valuable time putting down another weakling that should know better. This relief was short-lived as all of a sudden, a large shape dropped down on SCP-682 from the ceiling. 
This monstrous humanoid boasted four powerful limbs and was currently using all of them in an attempt to pummel SCP-682 back down to the ground. 682 could see several similar entities emerging from nearby cavern walls, having apparently blended in through color-changing camouflage and lying completely still in wait for prey, or in the case of SCP-682, the anomalous lizard that would prey on them. These entities are called camo crawlers by the Major Explorer Group, and because they have the same level of intelligence as regular humans and cooperate to hunt in packs, they are regarded as one of the most difficult entities to deal with. Not for SCP-682, of course, and the hateful beast could not be more disappointed in this latest ill-conceived ambush. SCP-682 came to a landing on part of the cavern floor, which was decidedly not covered with tar, and allowed its wings to retract back to its body. Without a moment to spare, it quickly made short work of the camo crawlers. The lot of them may have been as smart as humans, but SCP-682 had killed a lot of humans in its time, and an extra pair of arms wasn't exactly a game-changer. Now surrounded by a record number of expired backrooms entities, SCP-682 realized it was growing sick of level 8. It seemed that there was no winning with this place, as the levels that SCP-682 had visited previously either contained hordes of worthless expendable fodder, like this one, or were so empty that the SCP would find itself longing for any kind of interaction. It was time to search for an exit to this level, with the hope that the next inconceivably vast maze of nothingness had a more refreshing flavor to it. Knowing the back rooms, the exit to level 8 would probably come in the form of an off-color portion of the cave wall, or some glitched geometry straight out of those video games that younger humans seem to love to play. Fortunately, SCP-682 didn't have to think too hard about how to progress to the next level, as after wandering around for long enough, it merely fell straight through a random section of the floor into darkness. Seconds later, SCP-682 appeared in the lamppost-lit streets of level 9, also known as the Infinite Suburb. It looked close to midnight, and much like in Michael Jackson's hit song Thriller, evil things were no doubt lurking in the dark but none more evil than the hard-to-destroy reptile itself. If Level 9 was anything like the suburbs that SCP-682 remembered from its native reality, this place should be filled with humans packed together like sardines in a can. And while the Lucky Foundation Mobile Task Force that was present at the site SCP-682 had no clipped into the backrooms at were likely enjoying some sardine pizza for a job well done, SCP-682 was fixing to make the next humans it encountered into its own kind of unconventional topping for a feast. It was feeling oddly rejuvenated and almost happy again, but what it didn't know was that the darkness of Level 9 had the same anomalous, or I suppose vaguely supernatural, properties of Level 6. And as the research suggests, many kinds of emotional inversion fields that unnerve and disturb ordinary humans make SCP-682 feel the opposite way. It was strange, but somehow SCP-682 felt almost like it belonged here in suburbia. Just a little old me in a big, big world. SCP-682 mused to itself before trotting down the pavement through the neighborhood. Its mouth was starting to water as it carefully deliberated over which of these sleepy community homes it would enter first. The idea that behind every door there were unsuspecting humans fresh for the slaughter made this place seem like a paradise for the reptile. This rare good mood even remained as a new group of quote-unquote hostile entities made their way down the street towards SCP-682. All right then, let's meet the welcoming committee. These entities were known as the Neighborhood Watch, and the most relatively interesting thing about their appearance was that their anatomy seemed to be centered around singularly massive eyeballs. Without hesitation, one of these cyclopean entities, a floating eyeball known as Watcher, fired a piercing ray of light at SCP-682, which instantly disintegrated portions of the reptile's body on contact. Unlike the corrosive acid used by the death moss and the ugh, bursters from level 5, God, the damage inflicted on SCP-682 was at the atomic level. What this effectively meant 
is that the regeneration time to recover from these injuries was going to be slightly longer than usual. The other advantage that the Watchers had was strength in numbers, as it were three of them as well as a pair of striders, ambulatory eyeballs on eight-foot legs which brought up the rear of the neighborhood watch. Two can play at that game, said SCP-682. It instantly copied the Watcher's disintegration rays, firing a pair of atomic lasers from both eyes that would make a superhuman blush. These lasers of heat and light hit their marks with perfect accuracy and dismantled particles of the entire approaching neighborhood watch. As per usual, the backrooms then proceeded to roll out the usual clown car of stooges. SCP-682 could see death moths, a couple skin stealers, and some particularly wretched wretches hiding amongst the suburban homes. The reptile made a sport of using its newly adapted laser vision to pick them off one by one. Zap! I see you! Zap! Before long, there were no more backrooms entities in sight, and SCP-682 decided that it was time to break into one of the homes on the street and go to town. Or technically, go to suburbia. Honey, I'm home. SCP-682 thought to itself as it smashed through the front door of one of the buildings. Inside was no trace of habitation. No food, no photographs, and absolutely no humans. Oh well, thought 682, still mellowed out from the effects of the darkness. There's always next door. It exited through the hole in the wall it made and strode across the lawn to the next little house on the square. Knock knock! SCP-682 burst in once more and found this house to be much the same state as the last. Undaunted and feeling persistent, SCP-682 made its way down the street like a terrifying door-to-door -door salesman, bursting through the front door of every house in its path. Telegram! Special delivery! I'm here to talk to you about your car's insurance! There was nothing. No humans anywhere. Level 9 seemed to be one big, empty ghost town. SCP-682 started to consider the implications of the number of entities it had encountered earlier. While they were little more than distractions for 682, the chances were very slim that any humans that had made it this far could have survived such a plethora of dime store goofballs. SCP-682 let out an uncharacteristically wistful sigh. The backgrounds have me all messed up. I can't believe I'm actually missing those disgusting humans. I've grown accustomed to their faces. SCP-682 reflected on this for a moment and then had another realization. No, this is perfect. I'm free. I may never see these worthless creatures again. They'll never inflict their pathetic existence on what is mine. I am free. SCP-682 howled in private triumphant victory as it rambled through the streets of this dead world unknown to humans and especially unknown to the Foundation. This was nothing like the endless office spaces of Level 4, because the darkness negated any possible depression that SCP-682 could develop as a result of being deprived of other entities to interact with. Even then, it was clear that there would be more than enough entities for SCP-682 to destroy if it got bored. While there was no telling how often entities in the back room spawn or where they really come from, there never seemed to be a shortage in the levels where they did exist. SCP-682 began to think that Level 9 was in fact the paradise it appeared to be at first glance. Against all odds, SCP-682 had achieved genuine bliss, and it seemed that nothing could take that away. As SCP-682 stood there, staring up into the starless black void of Level 9's sky, it was caught off guard by the sudden presence of what appeared to be a blue hyacinth macaw landing on its back. The bird had given no indication that it was nearby, and because of that, it had somehow taken SCP-682 completely by surprise. What's more, the reptile was feeling an unusual sensation within its mind. It knew almost instinctively that this avian entity's name was Jerry, and also it was one of the only beings 682 had ever encountered that it didn't outright want to destroy. It wasn't that SCP-682 liked Jerry or even really cared for if he lived or died, there was something about this unusual macabre that didn't trigger the usual disgust response that every other form of life brought out in 682. This wasn't admiration or friendship, but more like optimistic indifference. Your existence is acceptable, Jerry, said 682 to its newfound winged companion. Let's go find some weaklings to kill. What? <coughs> 
Weaklings, Jerry replied. And so 682 was off again, this time with Jerry in tow. It was like the two of them against the world, and together they could take on anything. SCP-682 and Jerry out on adventures, running around and accomplishing great things in the back rooms. 100 years of SCP-682 and Jerry. Eventually, the asphalt and suburban houses gave way to an unpaved dirt path leading through a field of wheat. Within moments, the darkness was replaced with a dense fog, and the black of the night sky changed into the gray of a cloudy afternoon. SCP-682 breathed in the moist air and realized once again it had moved between levels of the back rooms without knowing it. This was level 10, the infinite wheat field. At this point, the word infinite was starting to feel cheap. Some warning would have been nice. SCP-682 grumbled, no longer feeling as serene without the benefits of Level 9's darkness. At least Jerry was still here. There was a silver lining to everything. No! SCP-682 stomped its feet on the ground in building frustration. It needed to find something to tear to pieces immediately, or it might reconsider even its tolerance to Jerry. The macaw was now its last resort in case there was no other entities on this level. Fortunately for Jerry, SCP-682 became alerted by the echoing sounds of trumpets coming from further into the wheat field and decided to investigate. Through the mists of level 10, SCP-682 could see the silhouettes of several large stone towers. SCP-682 didn't recognize the exact time period of the architecture, the way a human might assume they were from the Middle Ages, but it could definitely tell that these were old. It hadn't destroyed something like this in ages and it seemed as though it would soon be given a reason to. Perched high on the towers were a small patrol of goblinoid creatures, wielding bows and arrows. These entities spotted SCP-682 around the same time it spotted them, and began to knock arrows from their quivers and open fire relentlessly on the reptile. These ancient projectiles stung, but compared to the disintegration rays from the Watchers, SCP-682 saw this as a bit of a downgrade. The only real harm that it did to SCP-682 was spiritual, as the rain of arrows seemed to startle Jerry and cause the macaw to take flight away from SCP-682. Jerry, get back here, you coward! SCP-682 shouted to the bird-like entity as it disappeared from sight. It shook its head, however brief it was. It seemed that the SCP-682 and Jerry team-up had come to an end. Stupid bird. He better hope I don't see him again. The archers continued to pepper SCP-682 with arrows, but the reptile wasn't about to take medieval warfare lying down. With extreme speed, SCP-682 charged at the nearest tower and rammed it head on. The impact shook the structure, causing the archers to stumble and drop some of their arrows. Despite the damage, the tower hadn't fully crumbled, so SCP-682 underwent a brand new adaptation to settle the score. Armored plates converged at the end of SCP-682's tail, forming a large bludgeoning club similar to that of an Ankylosaurus. With the power and speed of 682's body behind it, this bony mass was more accurately described as a wrecking ball. And it came in like a wrecking ball too, as the reptile swung its whole body with enough force to smash the base of the tower into pieces. As the stone fell, so did the archers, and many were buried beneath the rubble while others scattered, retreating to farther towers while taking pot shots at 682. The reptile didn't chase them. It had bigger plans. It waited until the archers had made their way into the next few towers before grabbing a piece of rubble in its mouth and chucking it directly up into the air. The chunk of stone flew upwards and then began to descend rapidly towards the wheat field below. Demonstrating an eye for precision on par with the siege engineers of medieval times, SCP-682 swung its club tail at the perfect moment to hit the falling stone and change its course. It was a home run. SCP-682 scored a direct hit on the top of the next tower and repeated its stone-chucking strategy until the archers began to get the message. This was a war the likes of which these Freddy Freaker-looking demons had never experienced. The hard-to-destroy reptile roared a blustering battle cry and began to berate the entities for their weakness. You miscreants deserve this for scaring Jerry away! SCP-682 said without really thinking. What had gotten into it? Some strange anomalous effect? It pondered this as it continued to perform its rather convincing impression of a catapult. The archers had completely taken cover at this point, 
afraid to retaliate for fear of getting a rock to the face. Not long after, the same trumpet noise could be heard again, and the area around the towers became a lot less active. It did take SCP-682 a moment or two to realize that the entities had all disappeared with the sound of that instrument. Cowards would be cowards after all. The reptile was aching for more of a fight, but at the very least, Level 10 was offering something new. Though not all of it was new. A smiler peeked out at SCP-682 from between stalks of wheat, and this time, the reptile simply chose to ignore the uncanny grinning bastard and move on. No sense giving it the satisfaction, right? SCP-682 followed the dirt path for about a day, during which time it also encountered a pack of hounds, a skin stealer, and who could say how many death rats that scampered amidst the field. After this it came to what appeared to be some kind of settlement. The buildings here looked much more modern than the towers, and unlike the empty suburbs of Level 9, the reptile could see that there were actual humans living here. From all appearances, this appeared to be a small town square with an open-air trading post, much like a farmer's market. In addition to wheat, the humans living in this settlement had all sorts of goods on display and could be seen actively bartering with each other. SCP-682 licked its lips. None of these helpless fools knew it was coming. Malt Town, as it was known to wanderers in the back rooms, was about to receive a rude awakening at the hands of a Keter-class SCP. While the archers that had been encountered earlier posed a definite threat to those straying too close to their towers, the entity seemed to conveniently ignore this humble little town. Of course, Mercy was not in SCP-682's playbook, except when it came to Jerry apparently. But the macaw was gone now, and it was time for carnage. This was going to be fun. Go check out Could SCP-682 Be Contained in the Backrooms? And SCP-682 Slaughters Through the Backrooms for more Backrooms Carnage.